Well, hello, friends. Uh, it's been another month, so I thought we would do another Serenity OS update video. So, but before we begin, let me show my Patreon real quick. So the Serenity operating system and all of my video content about it is always going to be free and open source. But if you would like to support my work and maybe even one day make it possible for me to focus on this full time, then please check out my Patreon, I'll link in the description. All right, so let's talk about what's been going on in the last month. My favorite thing in the last month is that we have a bunch of new contributors. So in the month of May, six people other than myself have been uh, contributing over 100 patches, which is really, really awesome. Even though we are obviously still small, uh, it's still fantastic seeing people, new people come in and uh, get fa uh, familiar with the code base and then make their first like, non-trivial contributions. So it's really, really cool um, and makes me very happy. And, um, and something that I showed you in last month was the, the GCC compiling on Serenity. So I have a little hello world program here. And if you recall, last month it took about 10 or 11 seconds to compile it. And this month we are at something more like two seconds. Uh, so there's been a, a fair amount of performance work, uh, obviously, as you can <laughs> imagine from, from that change. And um, the big contributors to this particular improvement are uh, that we now use DMA um, for the hard drive transfers, and there's a new memory allocator in the standard C library. Um, but something that's also really interesting is that the build of GCC that I'm using here is actually built using the new Serenity ports system, which we just started working on in the last week. And of course, obviously, it's still very immature, but it already has nine packages and um, multiple people have contributed port scripts. So that's really, really fun and cool. Uh, <laughs> OK, and then uh, let's check out some stuff uh, that's new in the system. So um, something here that I really love is that um, the shell now has some uh, up and down history. And you can also do line editing uh, like this. Uh, home and end work, uh, it's really neat. And then if you try to backspace uh, when you get to the start of the line, we beep, because now we have PC speaker support. It's very, very fancy. Um, and you can also get the whole history like that. Um, let's start with uh, this thing here. So <laughs> this is, um, we needed a logo for something. So I, I always had this little bug icon, uh, but this month I drew a slightly different one. So this is now the placeholder logo for the system. We have one, um, but I certainly invite anyone who would design a better logo to, to make their attempt and, uh, and make yourself known. But this is the one we have right now. Um, and uh, let's look at some, some GUI stuff. So in the file manager, we can switch the table view here and see that something that's new is that we have mouse wheel support now. Um, which was really cool. I did a video on implementing that. And uh, uh, we also got uh, backwards and forward support here in the um, file manager. It was contributed by uh, Chris. So thank you, Chris. Um, and we can open up the, maybe the text editor. Uh, let's, yeah, let's just do that. Um, and we can see the new file picker. So, oops, <laughs> a little crashy apparently. Um, you can use this to open document here. You don't have to open it from the command line. And what the heck did I open now? Oh, shit, I meant to open that. Um, and and uh, what else do we have? We have um, the new launcher. Um, I mean, it's not the new launcher, but it is. The launcher is looking different. It's vertical now. And something that's, that I really like about the launcher now is that instead of having the apps and it hard-coded, they actually come from a any file here. So um, it's also Chris who worked on this, making these little any files for all the, um, all the apps in the system, which is a really nice move forward because it means that we'll be able to um, eventually make interfaces for configuring these, uh, which is really sweet. And then let's look at the process manager. So here we can immediately see the new tab widget that I've added. Uh, and it's just a basic tab widget. It allows you to 
have multiple UIs sharing the same space and then you just switch between views like this. Um, works exactly like you would expect. And these graphs here are new too. I made this little graphing widget. Um, and I actually, I just started making it because I wanted something to show here in the tab view. Um, but I'm pretty happy with it, how it turned out. Then another thing that's new is that now you can automatically get this context menu for table views where you can turn off individual columns, which is pretty cool. Um, that was another nice video that I made about implementing that. Uh, okay, so what else do we want to look at? I mean, I forgot to say anything about the new window look actually. So the borders are now a bit different and I guess like there's all kinds of little UI tweaks um, and improvements. It's still not perfect. And there's like lots of things to be fixed about margins and spacing and in various places, like things are not pixel perfect, but we're moving uh, in a good direction, I think. Um, so uh, that's something that I'm always happy to, to like um, to improve is just because I, I know that it's possible to get to a place of just like a pixel perfect UI and we are going to get there, um, but it will take time, but we'll get there. Um, okay. What else? Well, we have some new uh, command line utilities uh, from contributors. So um, some of them that I like are there's pidoff. So we can do pidoff file manager. We see that there's a file manager with pid26. But instead of saying kill 26, we can say kill all file manager now. These are some new commands that we didn't have. We also have who am I? That's a very complicated command that I implemented. Um, okay. Uh, then let me show you some other widget stuff. So here's the widget gallery app that I started working on just to show the different widgets in the system. Um, and the radio button here is a new widget um, that I implemented. Works like any standard radio button. <clears throat> Now, widgets can be disabled, that's also new. So these are not clickable or interactive widgets. Uh, and they have this nice little gray appearance. Uh, another thing here is you'll see there's a, a focus rect around this widget, and I can actually jump to the next focusable widget now by pressing tab or go backwards with shift tab, that's also new. Uh, and um, that's pretty cool. I think the slider was probably in last month's video, so I don't actually need to talk about that one. Um, so what else is there? Oh yeah, so um, something that else that was contributed that I really, really like is globbing. So now it's possible to do stuff like echo star.ini and it gives you just any files. And you can even do stuff like uh, question mark dot C and you get that. Um, very, very nice. Thank you, Robin, for implementing that. I love it. Uh, okay, so these are just some of the um, obviously visual changes that are easy to show. Then there has been tons of stuff fixed in the libc, tons of stuff in the kernel, and um, a lot, a lot of stuff under the hood going on, uh, especially with uh, graphics. And um, we are getting, there's stuff happening like everywhere at the same time right now. So it's, it's almost a little hard to get, keep track of, but I'm getting used to it. Um, but it's been a really fun month and it's been really active in the IRC channel. We're in uh, Serenity OS on the Freenode network. So come by if you feel like saying hi. Uh, but other than this, I don't really have much more to show today. So I just want to say thank you for, for stopping by and hanging out. And I am really excited about where uh, this project will go in the future. So, so thank you for being here with me uh, while we do this. And I will see you next time.